are flying over Boston Common, in the heart of Boston, one of the oldest of America's great cities. Almost 300 years ago, this plot of land was sought by the Puritan settlers as a training field and common ground for the use of all. And Boston Common, it has remained ever since. The lofty golden of the magnificent State House proudly crowns historic Beacon Hill. Alongside the common is the whose 24 acres lovely lake, tastefully designed flower beds, and fine walks. Here a great statue of Washington appropriately stands in the city where the events took place that led to the American Revolution. Typical of Boston are the stately swan boats as they calmly glide over the waters of the little lake in the public garden. Of course, they are safe, but should one accidentally upset, the passengers of the swan boat would receive an ugly ducking. Facing the common stand the aristocratic old houses of Beacon Street, where the descendants of the Puritan settlers still reside. Boston Common, and proper, and how? Leaving Beacon Hill, we fly downtown, where the historic buildings of old Boston, whose names are cherished throughout the land, rub shoulders with the modern skyscrapers of today. King's Chapel is seen from across the burying ground founded in 1630. Here are found the graves of many of the original English colonists. In the heart of the old district is State Street, the Wall Street of Boston one of the principal banking centers of the United States. The old State House, at the head of State Street, still bears the lion and the unicorn of Great Britain, a reminder that Boston was a British city for 150 years. What a contrast with the modern Custom House, whose slender tower rises to a height of nearly 500 feet. This striking picture is formed by the Custom House Tower rising behind historic Faneuil Hall, the cradle of American liberty. Constructed by Peter Faneuil in 1742 as a public market and assembly, Faneuil Hall housed the political meetings called by Samuel Adams and John Hancock. Picturesque fishing smacks bring the sacred codfish to T. Warren. At such a wharf as this, the world's most famous tea party was held, the Boston Tea Party. The Old North Church is one of the great landmarks of the nation. Paul Revere watched this belfry tower for the signal, one if by land and two if by sea. To Lexington he sped with his cry of alarm that the redcoats were coming, a cry of defiance and not a fear. Here on the village green was fought the Battle of Lexington, the first skirmish of the American Revolution. Here the Minutemen first shed their blood for liberty. A few miles away at Concord, the battle was resumed, which inspired Emerson's immortal line. By the rude bridge that arched the flood, their flag to April's breeze unfurled. Here once the embattled farmer stood and fired the shot heard round the world. The wayside inn at Sudbury is one of the few colonial inns still catering to man and beast. Longfellow wrote many famous poems here. From the air, we see Bunker Hill Monument, a granite shaft 220 feet high which marks the site of the first severe battle of the Revolution. Here, Colonel William Prescott, commanding 1,500 colonial troops, issued his famous order, don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes. And here he held up the British regulars until his ammunition gave out. But Boston is also a great modern city. As the shadow of our plane glides along Commonwealth Avenue, with the Charles River just beyond, we realize that the present has thrills that equal those of the past. Commonwealth Avenue, 
250 feet and three miles long, is one of the world's greatest thoroughfares. Once a part of the old back bay, the waters were filled in to produce this beautiful boulevard with its fine central parkway. Facing Copley Square stands the impressive public library, one of the largest and finest in the United States. At the other end of the square is Trinity Church, whose pulpit was once held by that great liberal, Phillips Brooks. From the air, we obtain a splendid view of Boston's chief architectural center. Not far away stands the mother church of the Christian scientists, built by the devoted followers of Mary Baker Eddy, who, 50 years ago, founded a new religion in conservative Boston. Massachusetts Avenue, another great thoroughfare teeming with traffic, leads to the Charles River and Cambridge. From Harvard Bridge, crossing the river basin, is seen the magnificent building of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Commonly called Boston Tech, it is probably the best known engineering school in America. In Cambridge stands the beautiful house where Henry Wadsworth Longfellow lived and wrote the poetry that is loved throughout the world. But Cambridge is most noted for Harvard University, the oldest institution of higher learning in the United States. From aloft, we view Fair Harvard on both banks of the Charles. When founded in 1636, it had one building, nine students, and $2,000. Today it has several hundred buildings, a student body of 8,000, and an endowment of over $100 million. At one end of the historic yard stands Widener Library, a lasting memorial to one of Harvard's sons. Stately old elms, surrounded by dignified colonial buildings, form the yard proper of Harvard College, old with memories and traditions. Four American presidents have studied here. Massachusetts Hall, built more than 200 years ago, is still in active service. During the War for Independence, colonial troops were quartered in its classrooms. Today, American youth studies the history of that war in those very rooms. John Harvard, seated in front of University Hall, proudly gazes over the great institution he founded. Back in Boston, in the Fenway, is the Harvard Medical School, an outstanding institution for the pursuit of medical science. What inspiration and hope have been given to hosts of American youth, perplexed with problems and uncertainties, who have stood on the banks of the smoothly flowing Charles, dreaming their dreams of future conquest. Now for a final view, capital city of New England, that sturdy band of Englishmen from the little town in Lincolnshire which gave Boston its name would be surprised indeed could they but return today to the 100 years ago.